All right, welcome to Bomb Shelter Bibles. Today we're going to take a look at Proverbs chapter 29, verses 2, 4, 10, 16, and 18. So stay tuned. All right, today on Bomb Shelter Bibles, it's a beautiful day here in Israel in the Samaria region, the Shomron region. And it's sunny outside. I'm filming today in the kitchen, and the cat is asleep on the couch. So, today we're going to take a look at chapter 29 of Proverbs. So, please open up your Bible and follow along in Proverbs chapter 29. And, Father in heaven, we ask that you would help us to understand your word today in the name of Yeshua the Messiah. All right, so taking a look at Proverbs chapter 29. Let's first open up to verse 18, and this is a verse I wanted to start with because it's very often quoted, at least the first half of the verse is quoted in the King James Version, where it is written, where there is no vision, the people perish, but he that keepeth the law happy is he. Um, and law there in the, in the Hebrew actually is... Um, Torah. Uh, so the King James translated this as where there is no vision, the people perish. And that's that's what the Hebrew says. But he that keepeth the Torah, happy is he. Well, let's check out the Aramaic. We know that the Aramaic is a translation from the Hebrew, but we also know that those Aramaic scribes had access to a much earlier version of the Hebrew than what we have today. Sometimes they make decisions in translation into Aramaic that makes things a little more clear. Verse 18. When the wicked men multiply, the people are ruined. But he who keeps the Torah, blessed is he. So a couple of differences here. When the wicked men multiply, as opposed to where there is no vision. So if we can consider these two to be equivalent, when there is no vision, ein chazon, that is similar or the same as when wicked men multiply. See, when m wicked men multiply, there's a reduction in vision, there's a reduction in revelation. The other difference here is that the end, he that keeps the Torah, happy is he. Well, happy is, in modern English, a very, very lightweight word. In verse 18 in the Aramaic, it's translated here in the Lamza translation from the Aramaic. This is George Lamza. He who keeps the Torah, blessed is he. Blessed is he. So, it is a blessing. It brings a blessing upon a person to keep the Torah. It's not just light, lightweight happiness. It's not, it's not civil law or local law. It is Bible law, Bible instruction. Actually, I just have to repeat again that the proper interpretation of the Hebrew word, word Torah is instruction. It's not law as if, as if it's some kind of legalism. It's instruction as to the way to live. All right, so let's get back earlier in chapter 29, and let's take a look, because this is very similar. Verse 2, when the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice, but when the wicked beareth rule, the people mourn. That's very similar to 18, at least when we compare it with the Aramaic. When the righteous are in authority, in verse 18, 
when the wicked men multiply, the people are ruined. We also see in verse 16, when the wicked are multiplied, transgression increases, but the righteous shall rejoice in their fall. So before we take a look at verse 2 again, let's take a look at 16, how this compares with the King James. 16. When the wicked are multiplied, transgression increaseth, but the righteous shall see their fall. Okay, see their fall. That's the difference right there. Whereas in the Lamza translation from the Aramaic, the righteous shall rejoice in their fall. So that's kind of implied in the King James. The righteous will see their fall, but the rejoicing is implied. In the Aramaic translation uh, by George Lamza, the righteous rejoice in the fall of the wicked. Because when the wicked are multiplied, transgression increases. There's more sin in the land. So back to verse 2. Chapter 29 of Proverbs, verse 2. When the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. But when the wicked bears rule, the people mourn. So this is getting into, you know, politics is, is not some kind of out there kind of concept. It's, a, it's an important part of society. Families are an important part of society. And the way that we lead our families has an effect upon the people around us, upon the neighborhood and upon the entire society. Proverbs 29, verse 2, Lamza. When the righteous are many, the people increase. But when the wicked are in authority, the people groan. See, the people increase. There's prosperity. There's, there's growth. The King James said that the people rejoice. So rejoicing is similar to increasing. Mourning is similar to groaning. The people groan. Okay, verse 4. The king by judgment establishes the land, but he that receiveth gifts overthrows it. In Lamza, verse 4, the king by justice enriches the land, but a wicked man causes it to be in want. Okay, so there are differences here. We have justice. The king by justice. That's, to my mind, more clear, although judgment says the same thing. The king by judgment. When the king executes judgment, he brings justice. Everybody likes to talk about justice. There needs to be justice. There needs to be fairness. Well, the king, through justice, through executing, executing justice and proper judgment, see here, the king is also a judge. When we think of King Solomon, he functioned as a judge as well. Okay, so in our society, we might separate things out into different jobs. So a just judge through justice or a just judge by judgment establishes or enriches the land. He establishes the land, King James, Lamza. He enriches the land. The land becomes enriched, which implies that the people become prosperous. But a wicked man, and here man is referring to king. We could say it in, in, in societies that are not monarchies. We could say that the man king is a judge, somebody who is ruling. So that wicked judge causes the land to be in want, which means that it causes the land, it causes the people of the land to be poor. Now see, the wicked man, according to Lamza, in the King James is written, the man that receives gifts. That is someone who's receiving bribes. If a judge can be bribed, that overthrows the land, and it causes the land and the people of the land to be in want. So a wicked man is one, or a wicked judge, or a wicked king, is one who receives bribes, one who receives gifts. 
So those gifts, those bribes, cause the judgment to be corrupted. The judgment of the judge, the judgment of the king, or the judge, judgment of the, of the man. We see at the beginning, the king by judgment establishes the land. The king by justice enriches the land. You see, so when there is a king or a judge or a ruler who cannot be corrupted by bribes, the whole land prospers, the people prosper. So it matters how you vote. If you live in a society that has a vote, it matters. Okay. And you vote for more things than just politicians. You, you also have a say in who's on the school board. You can become a member of the school board and help rule how, how the children of the, of the area are being taught. Verse 10. The bloodthirsty hate the upright, but the just seek his soul. Well, this is going to be clarified a little bit here. That's the King James. Let's take a look at verse 10 in the Lambs of Translation of the Aramaic. Bloodthirsty men hate the innocent, but the righteous have compassion upon them. Bloodthirsty men hate the innocent, but the righteous have compassion on them. But the just seek his soul. Hmm. So there's a difference. The upright is called the innocent in the Lamza. The just is called the righteous in the Lamza, Aramaic. Seeking his soul is referred to as having compassion on him. So him is the innocent. Bloodthirsty men hate the innocent. Bloodthirsty men hate the upright. So when it, when it refers to it as innocent, it sounds like it's talking about a court case here, some kind of case. Bloodthirsty men uh, execute lawsuits against innocent people. But the righteous come to their defense. Other just people come to their defense. And that's why it makes a difference when there's more righteous people in the society, when there's more people following the Bible because they, they come to each other's defense so that the bloodthirsty men cannot destroy the righteous. The righteous stick together and they stand up for righteousness. A fool utters all his wrath, but a wise man uses his mind. This is the same in the, in the King James. All right? You see, so, so this innocent, bloodthirsty men hate the innocent, but the righteous have compassion upon them. That leads back to verse 16 and 18. When the wicked are multiplied, transgression increases. Because the, the wicked are multiplied and there's fewer people to defend the innocent. But righteous shall rejoice in their fall, the fall of the, of the unjust. When the wicked men multiply, the people are ruined, but he who keeps the Torah, blessed is he. Where there is no vision, when the wicked men multiply, there is no vision. When, the, when there is no vision, the wicked men are multiplying and the people are ruined. But he that keeps the Torah, blessed is he, happy is he. All right, so that's a good, a good quick look, comparison between the King James and the George Lamza Aramaic. And let's zoom out a little bit to the George Lamza Aramaic, and this is also available through us at jtod.org, Jerusalem Tabernacle of David.org. Get yours today.
just strength. 